Hello everybody and welcome back to another Python programming tutorial. I'm Root of the Null and today we're going to be looking at the text wrap module. I've got the documentation already up. If you need to find it, you can find it online at docs.python.org and just search for the text wrap module. You can see it right up here. Now, uh, this text wrap module is super convenient because it is a built-in kind of a... Uh, it comes along with, with Python. It's part of the Python standard library. So no matter what system you're running on, no matter what platform, whether or not it be Windows or Linux, you'll always have this module available to you. Now, um, it's new in version 2.3, you can see up here, I'm running version uh, 2.79 for Python. I think I'm actually on 2.77 on my system, but whatever the case may be, we can use this module. Now, uh, I've got my text editor open up already. I'm on Windows right now, so I'm going to be using a different shebang line than normal. Uh, Python 2.7 python.exe. Alright, now the text wrap module itself is super cool and super convenient when it comes to working with text. You can probably tell it it does text wrapping and filling, hence, it, <laughs> hence the big title up top here. It provides two convenience functions, wrap and fill, as well as a text wrapper object, or the class that really does all the work, and a utility function called ddent. In this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you guys wrap and fill together, because they kind of go hand in hand. And uh, the text wrapper object is really the behind the scenes thing that does all the stuff. Utility function ddent is super cool, and we'll get that one in, in another tutorial. Um, but if you're, it says here, if you're just wrapping or filling one or two text strings, the convenience function should be good enough. Otherwise, you should use an instance of the text wrapper class for efficiency. And it gets on later to tell you about that. The first two functions up here, wrap and fill, they take a single uh, R optional sorry, single argument, the other one is optional being width here, uh, the, the single per, uh, parameter and argument that it takes is a string, you can tell that if you read here the description. What this function will do, wrap anyway, is it wraps the single paragraph in text, being a string, so that every line is at most width characters long. It returns a list of the output lines without new lines, and width by default is 70, like kind of a console or a terminal or a command line shell you'd be working in. So, that's a, that's Hey, that's that's cool behavior. Let's check it out. We're gonna want to import text wrap. I'm gonna go ahead and create a new function over here just for I don't know, good practice in Python, and I'll run through the like the boilerplate code that actually makes our code run. Alright, so if we need a string to pass in, I'm gonna go ahead and create mine. I'll call mine long string, because this is gonna have to be anyway. A really, really long string. I'm happy to be making videos again. I only have a short window of time to do it, but I will when I can. I can record in the library at school and only rarely in my room, but right now I'm home for the holidays. Merry Christmas, everybody. And have a happy new year. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, that's cool. So we've got a really, really long string, and I'll give you a little bit of my background and what's, what's going on. Anyway, uh, let's check out this function. It's textwrap.wrap. we get our module, textwrap.wrap. And we'll pass in our long string. And I'll print out what this returns, so we can check it out. I'm in Sublime Text, so all I'll do is uh, press Control b and check it out. It returns a list for us. You can see the braces and the, the quotes here. This is a really, really long string. I'm happy to be making videos. Again, I only have a short window of time. And you can see there's these commas representing that there are different items in the list. It separated the string entirely into pieces and kind of divided it by this, uh, this width of 70 by default. Uh, we can check this out for uh, line. Actually, let's, let's, let's set this as a variable. Let's call it wrap lines. Now, for line and wrap lines, we can print out the length of the line along with the line. Let's check it out. Now this is going to give us a nice display, kind of like a paragraph. This is a really, really long string. I'm happy to be making videos again and all the text that we wanted. 67, 69, 66, 63, and 37. You can see it never surpasses 70. The documentation told us it will be at most with characters long. But it's going to stop as soon as it gets to something that it can't chop uh, correctly anyway. 
because you know if you're reading text, if it just stops in the middle of the word and you kind of have a hyphen to carry it on, that's a little messy. Um, there's actually a functionality within the module that allows you to do that if that's the the behavior that you want. But for now, I like this kind of good reading English display of stopping at the end of one word and moving on to the next one when there needs to be more room for it. So, okay. Notice that it's using the, the correct length, and it's bringing out kind of like a, a, a paragraph when you loop through all of the pieces of the array in the list and display it there. This kind of makes a, a full string that actually contains everything, but remember it doesn't have the new lines. That's why our print function comes in handy. Now, the other function in the text wrap module will do this kind of same thing, except it will give us our new lines. Check it out. The textwrap.fill function wraps the single paragraph in text, which is going to be long string up here, and it's going to return a single string containing the wrap paragraph. Fill is shorthand for new line joining all uh, the, the array that's returned and the list that's returned by the wrap function initially, right up top here with our long string, the, one, the wrap function we just called, and it it just adds a new line at every single object. We can kind of recreate this effect on our own if we wanted to, but I just want to show you how it works. And of course, it accepts the exact same keyword arguments as the wrap function. So let's check it out. Uh, I'm going to create a little divider here, just print this out. And I'll add another new line at the end. And I'll... Yeah, it, it doesn't even have to be a separate argument. I can just all be part of that same line here. And now we'll print textwrap.fill, and we'll pass in our long string argument. Display this, and hey, we get the exact same output. Because you can tell that this one is actually a string, and this one is looped to different lines in the array. So it looks as if it were a string when we print it out. Now, we can, of course, pass in that special width argument to change things up. I'll create a variable for that. Let's call it width. And... By default, it's 70, so let's change it to 20. And we'll see how it works. Pass in width to the top one when we're calling textwrap.wrap. .wrap, and then we'll pass in the same thing down here when we're calling textwrap.fill. So we'll have the exact same output again. And this time it's wrapped to only 20 characters maximum in the line. We can, of course, change this to like 100. And you can see it's a little bit longer, more than 70 go even more to 130. We can change this as much as we want, and it'll just cut the line where it needs to, depending on the width argument. So that's the way that it works. Now, that's what I wanted to show you in this tutorial, just these two functions, because they kind of go hand in hand. They have similar functionality. Now, keep in mind that both wrap and fill work by creating a text wrapper instance and then calling a single method on it. That instance is not going to be reused. It only happens once, and then it kills itself. So for applications that do this multiple times, if you're going to wrap and fill many strings, it's more efficient for you to just create your own text wrapper object. And that's why we're going to move on to that in the next tutorial, and kind of why I want to just introduce these two functions first, and then we'll move on to the next one. But uh, thank you guys for watching. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this. Um, it's nice to be making a little bit more videos, and I hope to get more out to you very, very soon. Um, for now... Please comment, subscribe, like the video, do whatever you guys do, and I'll see you in the next tutorial.